every day seems to be a little bit different. New rules, new regulations, new policies for the state of Quintana Roo, Mexico. As of the filming and editing of this video, there's nothing that stops us from kayaking and swimming a bit with the doggy shark in the hot brackish water of the canal entrance. And this would be the last time since the pandemic hit that I would be able to film this Riviera de Maya beach because the state would eventually close down the beaches in any places where large groups can assemble. Like many people, we're running out of funds to be able to get basic small little things that you would think would be really easy to get. In our case, another tube of sealant for the windows, but it's coming. Just again, slowly but surely. Work on the boat projects has suffered. I only scrounged enough sealant to finish one of the two open port lights, and various electronics are deciding to break down again. Like many places in the world, a lot has been shut down shopping-wise. We're getting everything we require online, including phone situation where Robbie and I share a phone and it decided to break down even more. I've already opened up my iPhone 6 several times to do repairs. Luckily, the postal system is working well. We're getting packages from the local version of Amazon, which is Mercado Libre. I've already replaced the battery, and now it's time to swap out the home button, microphone, charge port, and headphone jack. For electronic repairs such as this, I hit up the how-to repair videos on YouTube. This is not one of those videos, but rather just an advocacy of the do-it-yourself iPhone repair. It works, and so does my phone now. And Apple, don't you dare purposely try to make this phone obsolete. They totally will though. I give this thing about one more year before it will stop accepting operating system updates. Our friends, as usual, keep us going by sharing with us some extra project supplies. Old epoxy filler, only needed to be graded down back into powder form. So this is how I've been spending my days. This epoxy filler allowed us to finally plug up some of those holes in the cockpit from all of the old electronics which we removed. I've been taping the backside, epoxying the wood into the holes, and then epoxying the backsides as well. For large holes like this, and if these areas were high traffic or had the potential to be stepped on or sat on regularly, I would also recommend at least an additional layer of fiberglass cloth as well. Not only thickened epoxy. A little bit of sanding and fairing and sanding again. Of course, a little while ago, we lost the use of our stainless steel water tanks and I really appreciate the delivery system was working well enough that we received a water tank all the way from the UK. It only took several days and we have one flexible 200 liter uh, water tank now. It's just a matter of installing it which will mean making a, a hard shell of a tank for the flexible water tank. That's what we learned from having the same kind of flexible water tank on my way, our first boat my way, and we transferred those water tanks over to uh, our good vessel Rosa. The only problem is, is we promised that if we were going to use these flexible water tanks again, that we would make a hard shell for it, because that was the only downfall. We, we managed to puncture of course, one of our flexible water tanks on Rosa. When you put it down in the bilge, and if there's any sort of piece of fiberglass sticking out, hard little pieces or screws, anything that can really puncture your water tank is the major downfall of, of having one of these kind of tanks. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna build a nice little box. We are running out of epoxy. We don't have a large enough piece of wood but things are moving slowly but surely. Robbie has been slowly organizing himself a little man cave. She's a mess right now still. Life without a water system during this pandemic has really sucked. 
Replacing the flexible water tank and hooking up the pipes will require removing the propane line, which will not be safe to grind around. And because we don't have a vacuum anymore, grinding will be a nightmare without setting up a little bit of a dust trapping tent. This is a bare minimum to be able to still lie down at night, not in a dust storm but of grinded fiberglass. Have we ever mentioned the heat here? It's about 30 degrees Celsius and I'm performing another wet grind. Actually, I'm using our viewer provided cup brush on the grinder. My favorite method for removing gel coat and prepping large surfaces for epoxy jobs. Shout out in my modern superhero costume to all those real heroes out there who truly need the personal protective gear. Here is a super scientific method for checking if my ground line is straight. Out in the real world, off the boat, there is no restriction on movement within our neighborhood, although we haven't been to the big town in several weeks, maybe even a month or two, only walking the family dogs around back and forth to the grocery store. It seems to be the center of most of our days is what we are going to cook and specifically what are we going to cook in the solar cooker because it's Freaking sunny and hot. I'm not the superstitious type, but it's good luck to eat gnocchi on the 29th of the month with a coin under your plate, don't you know? We, and many others of course, could use the good luck nearing this end of the month and the start of the next to pay our dock fees slash rent. We're still perfecting this recipe. Steaming potatoes is not the best method as it creates a skin around the peeled outer layer. Submerging the potatoes completely with water would make the mash smoother for sure. Robbie likes to peel his tomatoes for the sauce. Look okay, at across, across the bottom. Which gives an extra smoothness as well. With the onions and garlic, we're going with even consistency too, so it's finely chopped veggies. When the tomatoes hit the boiling water for about 30 seconds, the skin will begin to peel off a little. We take our garden hose and rinse them with cool water to really loosen the skin. Robbie likes to fry the garlic and onions in butter, but I prefer olive oil. Whatever, either way. I find the seeds are not particularly unpleasant, but the, the skin is. He's also a no skin guy, and I don't mind a little bit of skin. Salt, pepper, and a pinch of sugar to balance out the acidity of the tomatoes. We usually cook both trays of whichever kind of food for about three hours in the solar cooker, although the intensity of sunlight changes everything. Although the potatoes didn't turn out quite as smooth because of the steaming, they also came out quite dry, which means that we didn't have to add so much flour. The mixture should have just enough flour to roll the dough so that it keeps its shape. At this point, I was very hot, tired, and hungry, so the gnocchis don't have an interesting shape. However, press each one lightly with a fork and they'll look much more sophisticated. Into the boiling water and they bounce right back up to the top, one by one, and you are ready to enjoy this lucky meal of fresh gnocchis.